So a few days ago, I was at my local pawn shop. I go in there maybe once a week. I like to look at the different things they have in there, specifically guitar stuff. Sometimes pawn shops have some really weird stuff. And as you know, a lot of companies like Fender, they even make pawn shop models of their guitars and charge thousands of dollars for them. Just because of the weird, quirky things that you can find in there. And I was in there, um, I moved to the town that I'm in, uh, in the middle of the United States, about six months ago. And the first time I went in there, about six months ago, there was a black Fender Stratocaster hanging on, uh, on the wall. I noticed that part of the logo, the Fender logo, was missing, like part of the, the F, had a little ding in the middle of it. And uh, so I never really paid mind to it. You know, I have a Fender Strat, I don't need another one. A couple days ago, I was in there, and just out of curiosity, I asked him. I said, hey, what's the story on that Fender Strat up there? And he said, oh, I don't know. You know, it was just some employee who worked at the shop. I said, well, how much is it? And he looked at the price tag, and he said, $149. And I thought, are you kidding me? $149 for a Fender Strat? Keep in mind, this wasn't a Squire or anything like that. Uh, and I thought, well, I'm walking out of here with this today. So he pulled it off the wall and he handed it to me. And I said, 149, are you sure? And he said, yeah, it says right here on the, on the label, fake Fender Stratocaster, non-Fender parts. I looked it over and it did look a little funny to me. First of all, the headstock was black. The, it was all black, there was no trim, just said Fender, made in Mexico. Serial number looked super sketchy too. It said MN with a long, sp or MN4, I should say, MN4, a long space, and then the serial number after that. And it looked like a water slide decal. And I looked at it and I thought, maybe this isn't real. I looked at the thickness of the body and thought, this is the right thickness. I looked at the back, it had the skunk stripe. I felt all the dot inlays on the net, on the fretboard and they felt legit as well. They didn't feel messed up at all. I noticed that the net was the nut was replaced. I noticed that the tuners were replaced as well. They had black locking tuners. The bridge did not say fender on it anywhere. Um, the pickups were staggered pull pieces um, and the tone knob actually fell off the potentiometer was broken. The little thing that sticks up in the potentiometer was broken. And I thought, I don't know. I can't. It was the weirdest strat I'd ever seen. So I asked him, hey, can we plug it in? Plugged it in and boy, did it sound good. It sounded too good to be fake. It sounded too good to be a non-fender. And I thought, I'm going to go home and take a look at this. So I said, no, thanks. And I left and I went home and I did some research. Turns out that there was indeed a Fender Stratocaster that matches the description. And it's somewhat legendary, but not really for good reasons necessarily. There's a lot of confusion about this. 1994 Fender Stratocaster, black label. Today we're gonna look at the legend surrounding this instrument. And we're gonna look at what makes it so different and what makes it so mysterious. So, first thing I want to talk about is what did it look like back in the 90s for Fender? Well, back then there were basically four different types of Stratocasters that they made. They had the American, which was obviously that's their premier product. Number one, that's the very best one that they make. It still is to this day. You also had Squire, which was in Asia at the time, uh, Korea and Japan, I believe. Now, that division was created because of all the Strat copies coming from China. And Fender thought, well, there's a market for cheaper Fenders. Uh, why don't we make some and import them? So they started doing that under the Squire name in the 80s, uh, up until this time in 94 that we're talking about here. And even to this day, they still do that. There was also a Fender division, non-Squire, in Asia. Uh, there were some made in Japan. Now, these were... Fender designs and produced for Fender by Fender in factories they contracted out in places like Japan. They made Stratocasters and a few other instruments in this way. 
There was also Fender Mexico. Fender Mexico was a step up from Japan uh, at the time, that was the billing anyway, um, was that they would be better than the Asian guitars, but they weren't as good as the American guitars. And that's kind of how it all uh, went as far as the tiered list goes. Now, where things complicated with this specific instrument was in 1994, there was a fire at the plant in Mexico and it destroyed the machines that they used to tool the wood. According to the rumors that I saw all across the internet and the timing of this fire, there were a lot of pre-orders around Christmas time and the holidays for starter strat packs. Um, they were going to source these instruments from Mexico, so there was a big demand for these instruments. But because their materials and their tooling were destroyed in this fire, they had to come up with a way, how were they going to source the wood? How are they gonna source the parts? What were they gonna do? They had all these orders. There's also the income potential that they would lose if they didn't utilize this facility. So how were the orders gonna be filled? And this is where the legend begins. So the legend that I've seen, if you look this up on Google or Bing or anywhere, I'm sorry that I said Bing, I don't know why. Look it up on Google you're going to see a post. This post is going to give you a story. And the story is that Fender sent American Strat bodies and American Strat necks down to Mexico to be assembled. They then threw in Mexican pickups and import Squire variety hardware and electronics. And there's this idea out there that these 94 black label Fenders are American strats with import hardware and Mexican pickups. Now, these guitars in particular, they would have the black logo that says Fender. It would start with MN4, which stands for Mexico 94, and then the serial number. Uh, it was usually crudely applied. It wasn't like it is today where they stamp it. It was a water slide back then, as far as I could tell. Now, some of the models on the ball end of the headstock had a little tiny logo that said Squire Series. Some of them didn't. This is what causes a lot of the confusion. So a lot of people would rub off the Squire Series off the ball end of the headstock. I don't know, for aesthetic reasons, to pass it off as a real fender if they were trying to sell it. Um, I'm not quite sure the re I can understand why they would do that. I wouldn't do that, but I get why they did. Um, these Squire series instruments had the typical Squire parts. They had the, they didn't have the five, the normal Fender five-way switch. It was the, the long block with all, you know, eight different solder points in a row. They also had the tiny little dime size pots instead of the full size 250 Ks. The traditional series, which is the one that didn't say Squire series, on the ball end of the headstock. It was a mixed bag. Some people claim that they had full-size CTS pots. Others say that they had the little dime-sized pots. Don't really know the answer to that one. There isn't as much data available. Um, we're gonna go through some images now of what I found during my research. Um, thanks to Michael Seven of Squire Talk. These are some pictures of stock, what came in the Squire series instruments. So we're going to go through those images on the screen now. Now, in my research, there's unanimous consensus. I didn't see a single person saying anything other than good things about these. Saying that they are the best Mexican-made strats that you can get, that the necks play and feel like a dream, that the pickups are hot, Stevie Ray Vaughan hot, and that they wouldn't trade theirs for anything and that they put them up there with some of their American made instruments. I don't know how true that is, not owning an American strap myself, but that seems to be the unanimous consensus. There's a lot of people that are making this claim that these were American guitars with import parts and a lot of people saying that's just a rumor. There's no way that could possibly be true. Absolutely not. And it's a very polarizing discussion seems to have picked up steam recently even. Some of these posts were from this year, and they've been talking about this for 20 years now, almost 30. 
the prices online for these, if you look them up, anywhere between, I, I didn't find one cheaper than 300. They go up to five or 600. People uh, in the forum post that I was on were saying that they bought theirs for $80 or $50 or, so it seems to range anywhere from 50 to 600-ish, let's say. So what is the truth behind this legend. What are these guitars really? Is it an American Strat with an import parts and Mexican pickups? Well, I think we can piece together a definitive answer on this. So in the 2000s, the former vice president of Fender, and I'm gonna put that quotation up on the screen right now, said that the necks and the bodies were sent from California to Ensenada, Mexico during this time. Now, he seems to be intentionally unclear about the status of these parts, whether they were finished, whether they were polished, whether they were painted, whether they were routed. We will probably never know the answer to that. But we do know for a fact that these bodies and necks were sent from America to Mexico. The electronics and bridges from the research that I was doing for the Squire series, they were Squire electronics. They pretty much match exactly like my O2 Squire and my 2020 Squire. They still use the same small pots and long, you know, eight slots in a row switches. So that part of it seems to be true. The pickups appear to be Mexican. I've got a picture up now of a listing that I found of these as they were stock. And uh, it had two bar magnets, one on either side of the poles. Mexican pickups are still made that way today. It's hard with Fender pickups because you don't know, they don't really stamp them with anything, so you just kind of have to guess. So what does it mean? I mean, they must be good because of the unanimous praise and some of the exorbitantly high prices, right? And the necks and bodies, they couldn't have been CNC finished, machine finished, because they came from America. And I don't think American Strats use CNC machines, at least not in the 90s. Maybe they did, but if they did, we're talking about the same quality between America, America and Mexico. It went to a place where they had no CNC machines yet in Mexico, which means even if they were not finished, they were finished by hand in Mexico, painted that way in Mexico. Don't know if they were routed in Mexico or not, but either way, we're talking about handmade at this point. There are some drawbacks that do make these instruments worth less than a typical made in Mexico guitar. Those being the dime sized pots, the cheap switch, the trem block is really small on these, the bridge is really cheap, and the pit guard is single ply. Is it a Squire? No, I really don't think so. We have a full size, full thickness body. We have a neck that by all accounts is fantastic. Um, and all the other positives that I stated above. So it's not really a Squire. You don't get that with Squire. So I came home. Um, I went and looked at it again after learning all this. Came home, told my wife about it. I said, there's this Fender Strat that the guy at the pawn shop claims is fake, but I don't think it is. I think it's real. She looked at me and said, what is it? I said, it's a black Fender Stratocaster. I showed her a picture of one, a similar one. And she said, get your ass back to the store right now and you go buy it. So I went back and long story short, I said, hey, listen, this guitar has a broken tone pot. I don't know what's inside it. I can't open it up and see. Um, it's fake, according to you, fake, according to you. Um, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. And uh, he went and got his manager and he said, oh, it's fake? Yeah, go ahead, get it out of here. It's been here forever. So he gave it to me. So what I'd like to do now at this point, we're gonna take this guitar that I found at this pawn shop for nothing. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna see what's in there. We're gonna see if, uh, according to some of the images that I've shown in this section, Squire was stamped inside the bodies to indicate that they were meant to be Squire series. We're gonna see if this is an actual Fender guitar like I think it is, or if it's a fake Fender like the shop proprietor claimed that it was. So let's go ahead and grab it and let's take it out to my workbench and let's get started on taking a look at this guitar and seeing what we can find. 
Here it is. Fender Stratocaster, made in Mexico, 1994, according to the serial number. The F is kind of missing its paint there. But the, uh, the guy at the pawn shop said, fake Fender, non-Fender parts. Uh, so I was able to negotiate with him, get it down to about 50 bucks. As far as I can tell, this is a legitimate Fender Stratocaster, 1994, made in Mexico. As we discussed previously, it may have an American neck and an American body with import hardware and Mexican pickups. Pretty neat, huh? As you can see here, I don't know if it'll pick it up, somebody has sanded right here. So I think this used to say Squire Series. I don't know why else there'd be a uh, missing finish in that particular area. It's very hard to see. Uh, there are some issues with this individual specific instrument, though. Volume is actually working as a tone. This tone doesn't do anything. And this capacitor is completely busted. So I'm going to have to open this up and rewire the whole thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the strings off, we're going to take the neck off, we're going to take the pit guard off, we're going to take the bridge off. I'm going to replace the bridge with a Mexican bridge off of my other Strat to make this the best guitar that I own. When we take this neck off, it should be stamped Squire in the body cavity to dictate where this body was meant to be used in 1994 in Mexico for this Squire series instrument. So... Let's see what we can do. I got the strings off. I wanted to flip around to the back of the guitar and show you. So the neck plate on these standard was just plain silver with no markings or anything. It looks like they've gotten in here and done something under the pit guard. The pit guard also is not stock. So curious to see what we're going to find under there, if it's going to be stock pickups or something else. But they've clearly modified this themselves with that solder job there. If we move up here, the original tuners have been removed. I do not have them, so I might need to order some online. Um, they replaced them with these locking USA, I think that says special. Um, the strings came right off. But some of these are really loose, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up. Then I'm going to take the neck off, and we're going to see what kind of body this is. I got the neck plate off. Now is the moment of truth. If this is a real Fender Stratocaster made in Mexico, it will have Squire or SQ stamped in the body pocket or neck pocket of the body. So let's go ahead and take the neck off and see. And what do you know? Take a look at that. S-Q-U, I'm sure it says I-E-R. This is a real Fender. That answers that question. Let's take a look at the neck. Interesting. So I guess this is like a QC stamp from whoever inspected it. By the way, I want to note this neck is amazing. It feels really great to play and it's very well finished on the back with the skunk stripe and everything. One other couple other things I wanted to mention before I forget. They replaced the nut. I'm not sure what this is, but it hangs over quite a bit. Um, and these are not factory. They're black instead of silver. So whoever owned this guitar loved it. Uh, they modified it themselves. Doesn't appear that they did a great job, but uh, let's take the pick guard off now and take a look at what they've done with the pickups and the electronics. I got the screws taken off the pick guard. Are you ready for this? Because I'm not. Let's see what they did. Uh, by the way, it was screwed in like this. So there was not a uniform edge. So I'm worried that they might have, you know, drilled or screwed directly into the body in the wrong place and made new holes. But let's take it off and see what we got. All right. So very interesting. There's a sticker underneath the pit guard that says genuine fender. It looks like we've got a 250k volume pot and it looks like we have some tiny little dime-sized alpha pots here 
Um, it says D500. I don't know if that means it's 500K, but that explains why it broke off. Um, the solder job here, it looks like they did this. I don't, I don't know why, but it looks like they've at least melted it a little bit when they were in here. I don't think this pot right here is stock, the volume pot. And I also don't think they did it right because when you uh, turn it, it, it adjusts the tone instead of the volume. The other thing that I have just noticed is there's solder just sitting here on the body. I don't know why that happened. Um, it looks like it's routed SSH, the body itself. It does look like they drilled new holes for this pit guard. So this must be a like a modern fender, fender pit guard. Now, as far as the pickups go, I don't see any identifying information on them that tells me what they are. I can tell you they sound amazing and very vintage. Um, not really sure what those are. If anybody in the comments knows, without an identifying mark, what those might be, let me know, because I'm very curious. So this is where the fun begins. I need to now rewire this entire guitar because the potentiometer is broken. This one is. So uh, I might replace the switch. I've actually got some right here. This came out of a 06 Fender Stratocaster, uh, Mexican. So it's a Fender switch and some Fender pots. I also have some brand new pots over there. So I'll go ahead and rewire this baby up and I will report back to you after that has been finished. All right, so I figured out why the volume pot wasn't working. It was because the uh, solder joint to itself, you're supposed to solder the volume pot to itself, was cold, which means that the uh, it, it was soldered to the solder and not soldered to the metal of the pot. So I redid that, and then I had to replace the entire tone pot uh, up here. Here's the old one, completely fried. I mean, the whole thing fell apart in my hands, as you can see. So now we're gonna do the screwdriver tap test. This basically tells you if all your switch positions work and we can also kind of listen for the tone as well. So the volume is down all the way. Let's turn it up. And I think you can hear that. So now we've got this position here. There we go. These two. Okay, middle. These two. This one. All right, let's see what the tone does. Yep, you can hear that work. That works. That works. And that works. Great. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bridge. This is a really cheap import bridge, part of what we talked about earlier, uh, with a small trim block. What we're going to do is we're going to take the bridge off of this. This is a fender bridge with a bigger block. This is a uh, Mexican 2006 Stratocaster. And uh, I'm not happy with how the pickups sound in it right now. So until it gets the pickups that it needs and I can order a new bridge for the black one, I'm gonna go ahead and take this bridge and trim block off and install it on the other guitar. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Taking off a bridge is pretty easy. You take these six screws out, and then you take the claws out, and then the bridge just lifts straight out. So to take a spring out, um, it's a lot easier to do with no neck and no strings, obviously, because there's no tension. What I like to do is I'll take a pair of needle nose, and then I'll grab right here, and then See if you can see that. And then I just pull up. Can't really do it with the one hand. There we go. Uh, easier to do it with two hands. But I'm going to do that for the other two. And then we'll lift the bridge out. With no springs, the bridge just rocks back and forth like this. So these six screws need to come out next. Now that the screws are out, this just pulls out. So you can see we've got a little bit of a thin block here. Uh, this feels very cheap. I don't know how well it comes across on the camera. Naturally relic, I'll give it that. But uh, you can kind of see it looks like it's just cheap 
chrome plated. The block feels okay, but it's really small. Let's take it over to the other strat and see and make sure that the holes line up. If you look at where the holes are, it looks like it's an exact fit because it is indeed a fender. There you go. So we're gonna pull the other one out and then we'll compare them and install it. I got the 2006 bridge out. Here they are side by side. This can kind of be an object lesson to show you uh, some of the things that they do with Squires versus fenders. If you look at these two blocks, as you can tell, the Squire block is like half or less than half the size of this block. Um, very, very interesting. Notice they're about the same height, but this one's much thicker, and this is going to give you more resonance. It's very noticeable, the resonance and the sustain. These aren't just buzzwords, it's the truth. <laughs> so let's go ahead and set this one aside. Now if I grab this, this is the one that came out of the new one that we're working on. It does line up. So I'm going to install this uh, and then I'm going to, I'm not going to string this up right now. But the other thing, I did take the neck plate off of this. Um, when I was a, ch a kid, I put a Jimi Hendrix sticker. That actually came out of a pack of strings. There were Jimi Hendrix strings back then. And I cut it and stuck it on there. Um, I don't know, that neck plate's just special to me. So I took it off. I'm going to put that on the black strat. And I put the cheap one on here. So... Let's get this cheap bridge put on this guitar so I've got somewhere to put it, and then we'll put the good bridge on the new guitar. Got the new Strat on the bench again, and here's that bridge we took out of the 06, and it looks like it fits perfectly. We're going to put the screws in now. So I like to put one at the top and one at the bottom just to make sure that everything is uh, evenly spaced, just kind of set them in there like that. Now something I wanted to mention while I screw this in, I saw a YouTuber, a guitar YouTuber, who has quite a big following, and this isn't to bash him or anything, but he was reviewing a cheap guitar, and one of the criticisms that he made was that they didn't even screw the bridge in all the way. I wanted to point out that when you're installing a Strat bridge, you don't want to tighten the screw all the way. The reason is the design of this bridge is to rock if you're using the trim system. If you're going to hardtail it or not use the trim, not use the, the, wall, the whammy bar, I suppose you could screw it in all the way and then block the tremolo inside. But if you plan on using the tremolo system, you don't want it to be screwed in all the way. Because if you screw it in all the way, it's going to be really stiff. It's not going to move much. But if you leave a little bit of a gap under each of these screws, it allows it to move more smoothly. I'm going to screw the rest of these in, and then we'll put the neck back on. Real quick before we put the neck on, I got the screws in. When I put the screws on, I'm sorry, the springs, when I put the springs on, I put them on the same way I take them off. So I'll loop one end here, I'll take a pair of needle nose pliers, I'll grab the end, I'll stretch it over, and drop it in. I'm not going to do that on camera right now, because I need both hands for this. The bridge is on, it looks awesome, I really like the way it looks. See, it says fender there. Got the springs in. I'm not going to put the back plate on it yet. It didn't come with one. I'm actually going to put the back plate from my uh, 06. I left that sticker on there. It's funny. Let's put the neck on and uh, string it up. This is very exciting. I got the neck back on using that neck plate that I talked about. And I tightened these, and I tightened these. So next, we're going to string it up, and we're going to check the intonation and the pickup height and the action. I've recently started using these. I highly, highly recommend them. These are Fender Bullet 10s. Now, I remember, I don't know if uh, this was just me or if any of you remember this, but I remember, this is a good thing here to talk about this. So when I got my 06 Strat, I was in high school, 
and I remember thinking that bullet strings were like crappy strings. I thought they sounded bad. I didn't like the way that they felt. Uh, I remember they used to come in this like plastic container. It was uh, it was kind of like this. It was an envelope, but it was plastic, and it had a piece of paper in the front of it. And I remember thinking those strings were horrible, and I only ever used Ernie Ball. Recently, I was in my local music store, and I saw these, and I thought, you know what? Those bullet ends are kind of neat. Let's try those. I love them. They give me a sort of tone that I can't really describe. They sound better than the Ernie Balls that I'd been using. Um, I even put this in a Les Paul and think they sound good. So anyway, that aside, let's string this up with some bullet tents. I got it strung up. Believe it or not, the intonation is already perfect. Um, I guess it's because it's the same scale length and I already intonated this bridge on the other strap. Uh, the string height is great. Um, if I take this and set it here, uh, with the first fret down, it should be at 1.5, and it is. I just only have one hand right now because I'm holding the camera. Um, it plays great. Absolutely great. So the last thing we're going to do is adjust the pickup height. I usually just kind of eyeball this. Uh, some people like to measure. Um, but usually what I do, let's uh, get a good look there. I don't want it to be so close that it's to almost touching. Some people like that. I don't. Not on a Strat anyway. So we'll just do it about like that. I'm going to do that across the board, and then we're going to do a sound test. So there you have it. What do I think? I think this is an unbelievable find. I know mine has locking tuners and I know that it has a 250K volume pot that the previous owner installed. I know that it has a replacement nut and I know that I put my fender bridge in there. But the pickups sound amazing. The switch works fine. The input jack is fine. The middle volume pot is the dime size pot. I just left it. It sounds amazing. The neck feels as good as they said that it did in the forum posts. Even at $150, which is what they asked for, and I didn't give it to them, but it's what they asked for, it's worth it. The cheapest Mexican Strat you can buy today, new, is $7.99. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't buy this instead. It has character and things that you cannot buy new. The little nicks that happened, along the way. Even the bad solder job that the guy did before me, it's, it just adds character to it. And if you're anything like me, your instruments aren't just tools. They inspire you. When I pick this up, I think of the 30 years that it's been around and it just makes me wanna make music. It, it makes me happy. And I recommend that if you come across something like this, you should give it a try because it is not a Squire. It is a Fender. The legend, about this guitar is just a legend with a little bit of truth to it, just like anything else. So thank you for going on this adventure with me. I hope you learned a lot. I sure did. And I appreciate you watching this. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.